Uh, I'm Simon Maxwell. I used to work here. Um, <laughs> but as I don't any longer work here, let me just say on behalf of all of us who are from outside, thank you to ODI for what's been an excellent two days. Even the bits I didn't come to were excellent. <laughs> but the bits I did come to were really excellent. So thank you very much to everybody who's organised it. Uh, we're in um, trip report mode for this last session. As your final service from ODI in this conference, we're going to use this session to write your trip report to save you time when you get back to the office. And there are two exam questions for this session, really. The first question is, what are the six most important bullet point takeaways that you need to tell your colleagues about when you get home? And the second is, having told them what those six bullet points are, what are the six things you're going to do about it? And you means you. It doesn't mean somebody else. It doesn't mean donors. It, it means OSAID, you know, or USAID. It doesn't mean least developed countries. It means a particular country. So we want to try and make this a very uh, practical session. And we're going to be in Twitter mode. Um, I'm going to ask everybody to speak, including many of you, but also the panel. But please, no speeches. You know, we want to get this in 140 characters so that we really go for the bullets and we work collectively um, as a group. Uh, we've got a number of people on the panel who you've met before and one or two you haven't. Um, uh, you met Agratise Sambuni earlier on today, uh, economic advisor to the president of Sudan. Uh, David Archer is head of program development at Action Aid. Uh, John Lemoy, director of the Development Corporation, directorate of OECD. Uh, Neil Cole, who's Executive Secretary of CABRI, the Collaborative Africa Budget Reform Initiative, and Chief Director of the Africa Economic Integration at the South African National Treasury. Uh, Daniel Kress, uh, we heard from just now, Deputy Director, Chief Economist at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, and Michael Green, one of the co-authors of uh, Philanthro Capitalism, um, a best-selling book just been translated into Mandarin. Mandarin, Mandarin very good. <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to actually ask one or two of you just to say what your bullet points are before I come to the panel. Then I'm going to go down the panel quickly on the first question. We'll come to the second question afterwards, but the first question. Uh, what are the six bullet point takeaways? I want to emphasize that the proposition that was put in front of you in the background paper, and it has come through in all the discussions we've had over the past two days, is extraordinarily challenging to what all of us, every single one of us in this room, does on a day-to-day -day basis. And if it's true, first of all, that there are large numbers of countries graduating to middle-income status that don't need aid, that there is a whole new demand for financial flows around global public goods, that uh, traditional ways of delivering aid don't work and we need a more diversified, open, reactive, data-rich and accountable method. Um, then it follows that we need different kinds of aid agencies that are more like development cooperation agencies and less like traditional aid agencies, much more engaged in policy, working across new issues, including climate. We're going to need to be much more multilateral because a lot of these big global public good problems require multilateral action. And therefore, we're going to need in the development agencies people who can work on new topics, on new issues, in new ways, with different skills and different personal profiles. And in developing countries, we're going to have to work in a different way uh, because uh, a lot of this is going to be led by your own resources um, and not by donor resources. Uh, and I must say, I just want to say this, although it's not relevant, I thought the Nepali presentation just now was phenomenal, actually completely riveting, uh, and tells a powerful story about why development works. So don't underestimate the challenge that actually is in implicit in the discussions we've had. You know, if you're, if you're 64 like me, you can look forward to retirement. If you're 24, your <laughs> life is going to be spent in a very different way to, to, to what you might have thought even a few years ago. So before I come to the panel, I think we need to know whether you disagree with this core proposition in the paper or not and what your key takeaways are. I'd like six people to stand up and tell me in 140 characters what their, <laughs> what their takeaway is when they get back and write their trip report. Somebody in that corner of the room first, who is not ODI, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Just stand up, say who you are, 140 characters. 